Let's say that the name matching is not that straightforward. Right, so I have an event with a user ID, but in the JSON, it's user underscore ID. And now if we are going to do the unmarshalling of this data into a, an event, you're going to see that the user ID is actually zero. This is the zero value, right? Go is initializing every field in a struct to its zero value. But the action, because this is actually actually in lowercase, this is actually in uppercase, there is a match in between. So we are missing that. There is a comment about uh, unmarshal that it is not suitable for large data sets or streams because it may require a lot of memory. Right. So in general, someone said you will really love JSON, that's that's a problem. And uh, try not to have that. And we'll talk about options about how to stream JSON instead of creating a really large one by yourself. Okay, so the solution for this one is something known as a field tag. I can add this thing next to the user ID, and this is known as a field tag. It's not necessarily just for JSON. You are going to see it also in, let's say, ORMs or in YAML. Each of them has its own. There's a mini language of field tags, and you can read the Go spec to see what you can do here. And this is our hint to uh, the JSON decoder and also encoder saying that this user ID should be coming from user underscore ID. And when you marshal it, it should come out as user, user underscore ID and not as user ID in capital cases. And you run that, you see now that the user ID is being filled up with the right file. Okay, and usually most of the IDEs have a like a shortcut or a keystroke or something that is going to fill the structs with JSON tags automatically. Uh, Visco does that, uh, Golan does it, even my Vim does it, so you know that uh, it can be done. And it's usually a good practice because even if you don't really care about incoming data, when it goes out, it looks like user ID with a capital U, and for someone who's looking at JSON, it looks, looks funny. Okay. One of the biggest issues we have is known as missing versus zero values. And the thing is that we said that uh, Go is initializing everything in a struct to zero value. So let's say I have a request for, to start a virtual machine. And it says what image to use and how many VMs I want to run. And we say that if the user did not send us uh, a count, we just need to start single machine okay so i'm getting a data and this data is missing uh, the count right it has only the image and when i'm going to run it i'm going to see that uh, um, i'm having a, an image which is the debian book or screen which is great and the count is zero and now i'm facing a question how do i know if the user didn't send me count and then I should default to one or they send zero and then it should be actually an error. They can't send me zero VMs to start, right? There's this distinction between not sending me a count and sending me a count which is zero or less. There are three ways to solve that. Now, there's a question about converting JSON into a struct dynamically. I don't understand what do you mean by dynamically. Struct is a struct. There's no way to create a specific struct. Uh, but if you don't know the type of the message, uh, you can use a map uh, from string to uh, any, and then anything goes inside. Okay, so solution for the missing versus zero values. The first solution, uh, so I'll show you three solutions. The last one is the one I use. The first one is the one I, I prefer not to use, and this is by using pointers, right? So if I'm going to use a pointer, now I can check on line 25 here, you see that count is nil or not nil. And if it's nil, it means that I didn't get any value. If you're using pointers, uh, this enables to know if something came on the, over the wire or not, but you introduce another problem, which is pointers, right? So now if I want to check if the count is less than one, I actually need to do a star before that to make sure that it is there. I have maybe trying to access nil pointers at some point, which cannot be found. So when I'm running this one, 
you see now that the count is one because I actually found out that the user didn't send it and they moved. So you can use it in your API layer. You need to be really careful about that. And this is another example why you shouldn't share the same start VM struct in the API layer and the business layer. If the business layer has the same struct with the count as a pointer, this is going to have a lot of ifs inside and, and make it really uh, annoying to work with and also unsafe. You can at runtime try to accept something. This is not good. The second solution is to use maps. So here now you see what I'm doing is I'm using a map from string to any instead of a struct. And now when I'm using a map to string to any, I know the keys of the map. So I can know if this key exists in a map or not. Now I can check, right, if count is not in the map, I'm going to set it up. And know that I need to set it up as 1.0 and not 1, because this is any. I don't give any hint to J, to a coding JSON what kind of number I'm expecting. So it's always going to be floating point now, right? I can also check if they sent the image or not, this check as well. And then when I want to work with the count, I need to actually convert it, right? Because count itself is any, I need to do type assertion, right? This is known as a type assertion. Type assertion can come in two flavors, one with only single value, single variable on the left. And then if it's not float 64, it's going to panic. And the second one is the way I'm using it with comma okay, and then the okay is going to tell us if it's actually a float 64, if the type of session succeeded. And then finally, if count is less than one, I can issue an error, and then I get the request with the image, and I need to convert now the count because I can't start half a VM, right? Uh, so I need to convert it to an integer and run. All right, and this is again going to say that I have one. And you saw that this gives you the option to know exactly which keys we're going over the wire, but you saw that this code is much longer and it is uglier than working. This is the second solution, pointers, maps. Uh, if you want to work with maps, there is something called a, a package called map structure. The map structure can work uh, it does the same way of serialization that we do with JSON, but not from JSON, but from map string to any to a specific struct. So it can ease up some of the pain of working with that. And then you can check just if something is missing or not, and then use a map structure to uh, move the map into a structure. And uh, this means that you're actually doing unmarshalling twice on every request. That's another price. Point. And solution three, and this is the one I usually use, is to use default values. And then I'm saying, you know what? I'm going to start a VM, but I'm going to set the count into one. That is the default. And now I'm going to use unmarshal. And now what's going to happen if the user didn't send any count, it's going to stay one. Because as I said, the coding JSON, if there is a field in this struct, but there's no matching field in uh, the JSON document, it's not going to touch. If the user did send the count, it is going to override the one that I sent with the value that the user actually sent. And now I can actually check if the request is less than one. It means that the user actually sent something. If you run it again, we see that we get count of one because this is the default. It does not have any. 